So the Supreme Court is considering a case on whether the federal laws, which prohibit the possession of firearms if you use substances like marijuana, whether or not that is in fact a violation of the Second Amendment. This case has huge implications, so let's talk about what's going on. Also, I think one of the main supporters of this channel, which is Blackout Coffee. Blackout Coffee has amazing coffee and they're huge Second Amendment supporters. They have dedicated roasts for organizations like FBC and GOA. So if you get their coffee, not only you're getting a good product, but you can also support the 2A cause. I will leave a link to Blackout Coffee down below. And if you use the code ARMSCHOLAR, you can get 10% off of your order. So like I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about a critical Second Amendment case that is currently up for Supreme Court review. This case involves whether those people who use maybe recreational drugs like marijuana should be permanently barred from possessing firearms under federal law. More specifically, this case is called USB Daniels, and it's a challenge to 18 USC section 922 G3, which prohibits the possession of a firearm by any person who is claimed to be an unlawful user of or addicted to any controlled substance. With a growing number of states moving to legalize substances like marijuana, there is now a question up the Supreme Court whether or not that federal law is in fact constitutional and does it stand up after the Bruin decision. Because of that decision, this issue is now up for Supreme Court review. And the question is, after Bruin, should this federal law be struck down? Now, here's the background of this case. In April of 2022, police officers stopped Mr. Daniels for driving without a license plate. An officer approached the car and recognized that there was a smell of marijuana. That then led to a search of the vehicle where the officers uncovered that there were several uh, marijuana cigarette butts, uh, roaches in the ashtray. They also found a loaded pistol and the uh, loaded rifle as well was in the vehicle. Mr. Daniels, on a discussion with the police officers, admitted that the uh, firearms were his um, and that also he had been using marijuana since high school on and off. He also admitted that about 14 days out of every month, he was smoking marijuana. Though Mr. Daniels admitted to smoking marijuana regularly, there was no evidence that at that specific incident, was he intoxicated, was he under the influence, and nothing indicated that he was maybe driving under the influence. Well, despite that, this arrest, and ultimately there was a jury conviction of Mr. Daniels for violating section 922 G3. Mr. Daniels was sentenced to 46 months in prison and then also three years of probation. Mr. Daniels, in response to that, moved to dismiss his indictment, but the district court denied his motion. Primarily, he argued that this federal law was inconsistent with the Second Amendment and should be struck down as unconstitutional. Well, after that dismissal of the motion, Mr. Daniels appealed the dismissal up to the Fifth Circuit, and he used the Supreme Court's recent decision in Bruin. The Fifth Circuit analyzed Daniels as applied challenge to Section 922 G3 under Bruin. The first prong of Bruin asks whether the conduct at issue is covered by the plain text of the Second Amendment. The Fifth Circuit held on review that his conduct is because although not a model citizen, Mr. Daniels is still a member of our political community and therefore a member of the people as mentioned in the text of the Second Amendment. Then the Fifth Circuit looked at the second part of the test and determined whether or not the government could justify this restriction using historical analogs dating back to 1791, and ultimately found that the government could not justify this restriction. In holding that the government failed to meet its burden, the Fifth Circuit held that section 922 G3 is not like the historical laws that bans firearms possession by those under the influence of alcohol. They state that no historical laws disarmed sober people simply because they had at some point drank alcohol. The Fifth Circuit therefore ruled in favor of Mr. Daniels, but only as the federal law applies to him. So it was only an as applied decision. This case was not a facial challenge to the whole federal law and the Fifth Circuit did not strike down section 922 G3 in its entirety. However, there was a concurrence by the judge there, Judge Stephen Higginson, who stated that, although our decision is limited in scope, it is hard for me to avoid the conclusion that most, if not all applications of section 922 G3 will likewise be deficient. And through this decision, the Fifth Circuit reversed the lower court's decision and ordered for a dismissal of that conviction. That then led the U.S. government to file a petition for a writ of cert to the Supreme Court. Essentially, they're asking for the Supreme Court to decide whether or not this federal law prohibiting users of substances like marijuana from buying, owning, and possessing firearms is in fact a violation of the Second Amendment. Now, the question presented to the Supreme Court in this case is whether 18 U.S.C. Section 922 G3 which prohibits the possession of firearms by a person who is an unlawful user of or addicted to any su controlled substance violates the Second Amendment. So that is the question the government has presented to the Supreme Court. 
In the petition, they argue that in section 922 G3, Congress sought to address those problems by disarming regular drug users and drug addicts. That prohibition lasts only as long as a person remains a regular user or addict. An individual can regain his ability to possess firearms by stopping his illegal drug abuse. They go on to say that the Fifth Circuit, however, concluded that Section 922 G3 violates the Second Amendment, although the court stated that it had invalidated the statute only as applied to Mr. Daniels. The concurrence understood the court's reasoning to apply to most, if not all, applications of Section 922 G3 will likewise be deficient. That holding was profoundly mistaken, they argue. They go on to say that the Second Amendment allows Congress to disarm persons who are not law-abiding responsible citizens, and Section 922 G3 falls comfortably within that principle. This court should not leave the Court of Appeals' contrary decision in place. But because the court is already considering closely related Second Amendment issues in U.S. v. Rahimi, plenary review is not warranted at this time. The court should instead hold the petition for a writ of cert pending its decision in Rahimi and then dispose of the petition as appropriate. So the government's main contention in their brief is that Congress is allowed to put in place this type of restriction because people who use substances like marijuana fall outside the class of the people as protected in the text of the Second Amendment. The government believes people can come back into that protected class if they ultimately stop using that controlled substance. But again, if you have maybe used it recently, you are not within the protected class. The government also argues that the Supreme Court should hold this case until they decide the U.S. v. Rahimi case. If you're not familiar, that Rahimi case deals with the federal law also here, which deals with prohibited people, uh, deals with 922 G, but it deals with a different subsection, which is the prohibition of people subject to domestic violence restraining orders from being able to be in possession, own, um, buy firearms, ammunition, and other items like that. The Rahimi case is currently set to be argued in early November, I believe November 7th, before the Supreme Court. And the government here hopes that a favorable decision in Rahimi and the facts are a little bit more leaning towards the government there because Mr. Rahimi was not a good person. They're hoping that a positive decision in Rahimi can then be used in this case as well. So that's why they want this Daniel case to be held until after the Rahimi decision. So the government believes that any drug use makes you so dangerous that you automatically become a threat to the public and you must automatically be stripped of your right to keep and bear arms. The government also almost recognizes how overbroad this federal law is, but they believe that Congress has the power to create categorically overbroad laws that limit rights of everyone because it would be in the public's best interest. It's also interesting that in their brief to the Supreme Court, the government tries to draw a distinction between alcohol use and then also drug use. What this boils down to is imagine if the government said that not only is driving intoxicated because you know it's illegal and it's dangerous to yourself and to others, but also, you cannot drive even if you were not drunk because maybe you had a drink a week ago at a family barbecue. The government believes that the conduct would make you so dangerous, it would make you a dangerous person and therefore fall outside the class of the people who could ever drive legally. That is the same type of argument they're making here just with firearms. The federal law, in my opinion, is overbroad and sweeps too broadly to strip away law-abiding people's right to keep and bear arms. There is no historical support for such a broad application of the law. Instead, all the historical laws dealt with alcohol and actual intoxication and actual use of firearms while intoxicated. So this is going to be an interesting case going forward. We currently have a favorable decision in the Fifth Circuit, and now the Supreme Court has this issue in front of them, and they can take it up if they want. Right now, Mr. Daniels has to file his response by November 9th, and then you also have the Rahimi case, which is set to be argued in front of the Supreme Court on November 7th. And I think what's going to be interesting and it's going to be interesting to see is whether or not the Supreme Court at those oral arguments seems interested in maybe some of these other cases. Regardless, Rahimi will impact not only this case, but other cases like the Range v. Garland case, which dealt with uh, federal prohibitions for nonviolent felons. That case dealt with a man who just simply lied on a food stamps application and him becoming a nonviolent felon and losing his right to keep and bear arms forever. So right now there are multiple cases seeking Supreme Court review which deal with prohibited people and 922 G and multiple sections. It's gonna be interesting to see maybe if they want to take up this Daniels case, take up the range case, or if they're only going to actually decide the Rahimi case and then hold all these other cases and let Rahimi play out with those cases. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section. I know this maybe is gonna get people feeling one way or the other. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. And as we get more information on this case, of course, I will let you guys know. If you like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. 
Also, I mentioned that you might want to double check your subscription feed because YouTube loves to unsubscribe people from the channel. I get comments every single day of people being unsubscribed. So just double check those subscriptions. And also, if you're a longtime viewer of the channel and you're not subscribed to the channel, I know about 60% of all my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Please consider subscribing to the channel because that really does help the channel to grow and to reach more people. But regardless, thank you guys so much for all of your support. And never forget this nation was built by Arm Scholars and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars. <laughs>